welcome. Uh, we want to <clears throat> thank you guys for coming. This is a time where we get to honor Kathy and remember her and how sweet she was and how tender she was. But it's also a time where we get to hang out and have fun and praise the Lord because we do not weep and mourn like those who have no hope because we know that we will see Kathy again. And I remember when I first heard that she had passed on and I was like, oh, she's so lucky. <laughs> and that's kind of a weird thing to say, but when your hope is in the Lord and we know that Jesus will return again to come and get the rest of us, we don't mourn like the world mourns. We have our hope securely based in Jesus Christ. So I'm excited. I'm excited to celebrate Kathy's life and honor her today in a, in a way that is fitting uh, for before the Lord and before each other. So we're going to do some worship and some praise, and, um, and then Lynn's going to come up and share and I'm excited. <laughs> so if you guys want to stand, and we will begin. The songs that we're doing today are, uh, are some of Kathy's favorites, um, especially the last one. I'm, I'm the worship leader here at the church, and uh, anytime we would do Days of Elijah, I just knew that it would make her happy. And just a quick story, I usually pick my songs out three weeks in advance. And um, three weeks ago, I picked out Days of Elijah for this last Sunday. And I had no idea that in the next week that she would pass and go to be with the Lord. And so I just felt like it was God's way of saying, I've got Kathy in my hands. I've got Kathy. And I'm taking care of her, and she is with me. And it's just kind of like his way of saying that I love her and I've got everything in control. And so as we do these songs today, um, it's, it's to honor our Lord Jesus Christ, and that's what Kathy was all about. Every time I talked to her, every time that um, it would just, you just come in contact, you just felt the joy of the Lord, and you felt that strength from the Lord. Because she was a very special person to me and to this church, and obviously to all of you as well. So as we're worshiping our, our Lord, just give him everything because that's what Kathy would want. So Lord, we just come before you and we just say, God, you are the God of the impossible. You are the God who loves us. You love us. And no matter what we're going through, Lord, you're going to make a way. And that is what we have our faith and our hope in, Lord. That someday, Lord, we're going to be where Kathy is right now with you in eternity. So, Father, we set our hearts before you and surrender our lives before you. And we love you, Jesus. So during worship, just feel free to just worship the Lord. We'll start a standing, but if any time you want to sit or you want to just kneel or raise your arms, there's just, there's just freedom here. I worship 
promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You're the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Let us become 
give to us does not end when we are done here, Lord, on this earth. But that life that you have given to us is greater than any power. It is greater than death. Lord, the last breath we take here is the first breath we take with you. And God, our home is with you. Our place is with you. Our hearts long to be with you, Jesus. Because you are the author and the finisher of our faith. You've put your love inside of our hearts, God. God, even though we miss Kathy with all of our hearts, Lord Jesus, we know that she is with you, and we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we will see her again someday. And God, we thank you for that assurance that is ours. We thank you for your goodness towards us. We thank you for that promise. This world is not what it was meant to be. All this pain, all this suffering There's a better place waiting for me in heaven Cause every tear will be wiped away Every song and sin erased We'll dance on streets of amazing grace in heaven in heaven i'm going home where the streets are golden every chain is broken oh i want to go oh i want to go home where every fear is gone i made you roll because where i I laid down my burdens, I laid down my past I run to Jesus, no turning back Thank God Almighty, I'll be free at last In heaven, oh in heaven, yes I'm going home Where the streets are golden, every chain is broken Oh, I want to go, oh, I want to go home Where well, the fear is gone, I'm in your open arms Where I belong Cause blinded eyes will finally see The dead will rise on the shores of eternity The drum will sound the angels will sing hallelujah hallelujah i am going home where the streets are golden and every chain is broken oh i want to go oh i want to go home where every fear is gone i mean you open arms where i thank you that our home is with you, that our place is with you, Lord, and that while we're on this earth, God, that we can raise a song of praise to you, that we can lift our voices to you, Jesus, no matter what we are going through because of the confidence that we have of where we are going, 
and that we can raise a hallelujah to you and say, God, God, you are greater than anything that we are facing. God, you are stronger than anything that we are facing. And God, you hold the whole world in your hands, and you also hold us in your hand because you love us. We love you, Jesus. So through it all, God, we lift our voices to praise you, to give you glory, to honor you, to say that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and that nothing that happens is not too big for you, God. It is not too big for you. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. to fight for me. Sing a little louder 
of Elijah declaring the word of the Lord and these are the days of your servant Moses righteousness being restored and though these are days of great trials the famine and darkness and sword still we are the voice in the desert Friday, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, He comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, so lift your voice. It's a year of Jubilee. Out of science, salvation comes. And these are the days of Ezekiel, the dry bones becoming his flesh. And these are the days of your servant David rebuilding a temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest, the fields are as wide in the and we are the neighbors in your vineyard Declaring the word of the Lord Behold He comes Sweating on the clouds Shining like the sun At the trumpet call So lift your voice To hear a jubilee And that as I inhale Salvation comes Behold He comes Riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, at the trumpet call, so lift your voice, it's a year of jubilee, the doubt of science till salvation comes. Declare there is no God. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 There's no God like Jehovah, there's no God like Jehovah. Behold, He comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, so lift your voice, it's a year of jubilee. 
Kathy got there first, and she's beholding you right now, and she is declaring in your presence that there is no God like Jehovah. There is no God like our God. And Lord, we join her and all the people that love you and are in heaven, Lord, and, and are on this earth declaring that there is no God like you. You raise us up above everything that's going on and give us your perspective, your eternal perspective, God. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. And you may be seated. Again, we would just like to uh, thank everybody for being here and celebrating with us uh, the life of Kathy Stumlin. And what a blessing she was to all of us. And uh, as the song list that was given for the worship team to play, she was a person of praise. She was a person that loved Jesus Christ with all of her heart, soul, mind, and being. And uh, I know that we honor her by uh, joining together and worshiping Christ together as we honor her memory. The Word tells us that we honor those to whom honor is due. And I know that Kathy would want us to talk more about Jesus than she would want us to talk about her. But I believe that when we talk about her life and we share memories of her together, I believe that there is going to be a life message that comes through our memories as we share them together. And I believe that the testimony, the message, the life message that she lived and that she left us was all about Jesus. Uh, I only had the privilege of knowing Kathy for one year, a little over one year. Um, and my wife and I had the privilege of, of being at her home several times, praying with her, uh, fellowshipping with her, even uh, cleaning chickens with her. That was a life-altering experience, I'll tell you that much. Uh, she taught me how to reach deep into the cavity and to pull out the lungs of those chickens, not leaving anything that should uh, be taken out left. And I told her, I said, I can, I'm pretty much getting everything else, but it's very hard for me to get my fat fingers up in that chicken. And she said, keep working at it. You'll get the hang of it, you know. <laughs> she was very patient uh, with her instruction to me. And I told her before it was all over, I said, I think I'm finally getting in the hang of this. And she said, don't worry, we'll go back over them tomorrow. <laughs> so, um, but I think all of us uh, were here because we, we loved her and we enjoyed being with her. We enjoyed her uh, friendship and her fellowship. And Arlen, I just want to say to you that there are no words that anybody could share that could adequately honor or describe, um, I know that your love for her and our love for her. And so we're just going to have to try to show you uh, what she meant to all of us. And I just pray that uh, for the whole family that we know God gives us daily grace. But there I appreciate so much when God gives intervening grace, that extra abundance of amazing grace that we need to make it through tough times. And I pray that today you will feel his presence and his, and his grace. And that's for all of us. Um, we're going to have a time of family sharing. And if anybody has memories, so this is unscripted, unplanned. But if anybody has memories, 
uh, that you would like to share. We're going to have an open mic here. But before we do that, I just want to say this. The Apostle Paul told the Corinthian church, he said that you are living letters. And he said, you have been written by the very finger of Christ. And that means, and I already said that, that our lives have a message. That God has created us to express a unique and a distinct life message through us. That His glory and the testimony of who He is and how He made us, fashioned us, molded us, created us. That the reflection of His glory could be seen through each and every one of our lives. The tragedy is many people don't even know their own life message. They haven't unraveled the meaning of their own life and and how God has called them and, and invited them to be a part of His plan and that your life has meaning. It has spiritual substance. You were born not for time, but you were made for eternity. And so I, I appreciate Kathy because... Her life message came out loud and clear. She understood the true meaning and purpose of life. She understood that it wasn't about killing time. It wasn't about filling up the dash between the dates of our birth and death with a bunch of meaning, meaningless, trivial things. But it was about living her life in light of eternity and coming to have an intimate relationship with the Lord and then sharing that relationship with other people and learning to love well and to serve well and to give her life uh, in in just serving and loving other people. And so uh, I know that when I met her, I encountered the presence of Jesus. I was her gentleness and, and just the tenderness of how she would love a person. Uh, impacted my heart and my life. And so I want us to just honor her by sharing memories. And if you have a memory uh, or something, we invite you to come. But Tina, I'm going to ask you to, to lead off today. Would you like to be on the platform? Sure. Okay. I know that you really love getting attention. So... want to hold the mic? No. Oh, I just don't. Okay. Okay. First off, I just want to thank you all for coming. Uh, I just want to thank you for coming. My dearest Kathy, I wanted to share so many stories we had together through our lives, but then we would be here way too long. I just wanted to thank you for teaching me to live through the life of Jesus and the love of Jesus, to care for people, to listen to them, and to love them. As trying as it can be, I still have to be patient and let God do his thing through me. You were so patient, I am not. As patient as you, but as time goes on, I try to be. You were always the first one to pray for someone who needed it, and I would be behind quietly praying too. You were just a little bolder than me but I'm trying. Just standing up here talking is way out of my comfort zone, but I'm trying. You always had a smile on your face and the twinkle in your eye was always there. I know you're not here on this earth today, but I do know you are in heaven. You're healthy. You're dancing in the clouds with Jesus. Mom, Dad, and Dutch, and many more, too many to count. This story here is when Kathy worked at Lakeview Health Center 
in West Salem. She was a nurse. And one day, there was a resident from Hungary. He spoke English. And this, is, this was Kathy. I mean, this is what she did. So one day, they had a resident from Hungary. He spoke English, but he got angry, and it was straight Hungarian. This particular day, he could not be consoled. He was angry, mad, and yelling. He was hollering down the hall, and Kathy put her arm over his shoulder and started to talk to him in tongues. The Christian language. They continued down the hall, and she was talking, and he was talking, in a conversation, and pretty soon his shoulders dropped, and he was calming down. He was talking still, and so was she. They got down at the end of the hall, and he asked her where she learned to talk Hungarian, and she just smiled. She was just talking in tongues but he was understanding Hungar Hung Hungarian, or whatever, Hung yeah. When they walked back to the nursing station to where everyone was, he went happily one way and she the other. The nurses asked her where she learned to talk Hungarian, and they just smiled, and she just smiled and continued with her duties. God was working through Kathy to help this man. I want you to know God is in this church with us and you every moment of your life. Please give yourself to Jesus because I want each and every one of you to be an eternity in heaven with Jesus. Don't wait till it's too late. I love you all and I love Kathy. That's it. Anybody else that would like to come and share? We have a very quiet group this afternoon. Anybody else? There was a time I wouldn't have come up here either. What I marveled about Kathy is how she looked out for other people and not for herself. She looked out for Arlen continually. It didn't make any difference if he was good or bad. Now, maybe he never had a bad day. I don't know. But as I know me, yeah, there are some of those days. But she took care of Arlen you know what, Arlen is a miracle, and I think it's because of the love that he and Kathy had together. And so when I would see them together, she was so in love with that man, the only one that she loved better was Jesus. And we spent some time together, I spent some time with Arlen out in when he was going through dialysis and she was always there in waiting room for him. And so we had a, a number of conversations and she told how different times he probably shouldn't have been here, but because of her love for Jesus and for Arlen, Arlen is still here. And so we are blessed just to have known Kathy and to know Arlen, Tina, and Russ. And we're a blessed people because of them. Anyone else? You can delay the sermon by coming up now.
I do want to share uh, just a few minutes, and we'll try to have you out by 9 this evening. <laughs> no, I want to share briefly out of a passage of Scripture that I know has been an anchor stone for the people of God for over uh, 3,000 years. And this is Psalms 23. And I had no idea the passage of Scripture that uh, they were going to select for the handout that was given to you today. Uh, but we have the privilege of reading uh, the Scriptures today and having God through His Word specifically speak to us. And I pray that no matter where you're at in your relationship with God, that you would just open your heart to hear His heart for you. And Psalm 23, and most of us could probably quote it or some part of it, it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, and He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for His namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This psalm, as I said before, is an anchor stone to, I believe, every believer uh, because it allows us to see how God personally cares and loves for each one, how He loves each one of His sons and daughters, how He ensures us of a presence no matter where or what we're going through. And the, psalms, uh, the psalmist uses the metaphor of a shepherd among his sheep. And also there's a second half to this psalm that sometimes it's not emphasized, but also describes God not only as a shepherd, but a host. He's willing to host us even in the most difficult of environments, and he secures us with his presence and his protection and provision for our lives. And so you see that there are different seasons that David in this psalm described of seasons of life. Difficult days, days that would be tough, days in the wilderness faced with opposition, misunderstanding, enemies, but yet God is there refilling his cup, anointing him with fresh oil, ensuring his presence and his anointing with him and upon him. But then there's also these good seasons where the shepherd is guiding you into lush green pastures and you're refreshing yourself upon the living water and the cool streams in which he renews and he refreshes us. I believe that I could also give the testimony that David gives in this psalm. I, I found that God is good all the time, no matter what season of your life. Whether it's in good times or difficult times, whether it's a difficult season or a good season, God is there. He, he, he has promised us that he will never leave us nor forsake us, but he will be with us always, even until the end of time. The very last day, God's presence will reach us and be with us. But there is a particular day that David describes that is a unique day, and that is a day that many of us want to delay. We want to say, no, I don't want to face that day. I, I, I hope to put it off as long as possible. But he talked about a day in which we would navigate the deepest of all deep valleys and that is the valley of the shadow of death. One translation translate, translates it this way. A valley of, the sh of death's shadows. In other words, that in the middle of this dark valley, in the darkness, death is present. 
you know that no one walks out of this valley on the other side alive. People go into this dark valley and they experience death. But the psalmist said, even though I know that I'm going to be overshadowed by death and the day of my death is upon me and this is a valley that I must walk through, he said, I've learned to not fear it. I've, no, I've learned that death no longer has a terror, a tyranny over my heart and my life because as I navigate this valley that I've never walked through before and death is now overshadowing me and I'm, I'm walking through this valley of death, it says that he, the shepherd, is there with me. And those of us that are believers in Jesus, we know the, the, the reason why he's there with us is he's there to shepherd us and usher us through something that we've never known before. We've never experienced what it means to, to, to die. And he says, but I have been there ahead of you. I've been there before you. John the Revelator in the book of, uh, of, of Revelation, John has this encounter with the re resurrected Christ and John fell on his face when he saw the resurrected Christ. And Christ said to him, he said, do not be afraid, John. He said, I was dead, but behold, I am alive forevermore. And I now have the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Jesus said to Mary and Martha, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. And even though someone dies, they will still live. How is that possible? It's because of a relationship with the one who's experienced death, but has gone through the dark valley of death, but has come out the other side victorious, revealing that there is life after death. There is what we call resurrection life, resurrection from the dead. And so I believe that when we all face this place, this valley of the shadow of death, that the promise that David finishes in this passage where he said, I found that surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Truly, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. It means that even on death's day, the day that I will experience the valley of the shadow of death, I can still see the goodness and the mercy of God. God retranslates every moment of pain, every moment of darkness, every, every moment of death for the believer. He takes death and he begins to remove the sting of death and turns it into the greatest victory for every believer in Christ Jesus. Now, there is a, another psalm, Psalm 139, and in verse 11, 12, the psalmist talks about that there are things that because we've never experienced them before and because there is this unknown that is before us about is there life after death? What's going to be like? What are going to be the first few moments of what it's going to be like after my eyes close in death and I, I breathe out my last breath? What, what is life going to be like? Well, the psalmist said this, and this is for those of us that, that sometimes have a fear of the unknown. What is it that I, I don't know? And, and what is it that I cannot see and cannot comprehend? Well, the psalmist said this, if I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, there is a light about me, even in the night. Even the darkness is not dark to you, God. And so, what may be unknown to me, what may be a mystery to me, what be, may be frightening to me, the fear of death that, that may somewhat maybe try to intimidate me. The psalmist said, even though there are moments where I cannot see clearly, you provide a light about me in the night. He said, even darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day, for darkness is as light with you. I'm glad that when I walk the valley of the shadow of death, there is going to be a shepherd who is the light of my life. 
that is able to see clearly to navigate me through that darkness. Now, I want to just share quickly three things of what I believe the Scripture teaches us about what it's going to be like the first few moments after we close our eyes in death, breathe our last breath for the believer. The Bible tells us, the Bible teaches us that every believer will have a personal encounter and see Jesus Christ face to face. Every believer has that hope that our faith, what we've been believing for, will turn into sight. There will be a manifestation of what we've been believing for. And the Bible tells us that Jesus will be the one that greets every one of his sons and daughters. He will greet them personally. First John says this, First John chapter 3, verse 2. He said, Beloved, we are the children of God now. And so, even though it may not appear that I'm, I'm, I'm fully walking out what it means to be a son and daughter of God, a child of God, it says God, because of his love for us, doesn't say you have to be perfect to be called this. No, in his grace, he calls us in our weakness, brokenness, and immaturity as we trust in him. He says, I'm going to establish a relationship with you, not based on your performance, not based on your perfection, not based on your works, but I'm going to set my love upon you and I'm going to allow you to encounter my power and my grace and you're going to find that I am sufficient for you. And he says, he calls us his children now in the present tense. And it says, and what we will be, or what he's going to make us to be, transform us to be, has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. Because here's the promise. Because we shall see him as he is. Every believer will see him face to face. Now, there's another promise that I want to just share with you of of what it will be like for every believer the moment that they die and experience eternal life with Christ. And and so while we're talking about this, I want you to understand this this is Kathy's life experience right now. She has seen Christ Jesus face to face. And I know in the last year of her life, there was a growing weakness in her body. There were ailments that she was struggling with. There's no struggle anymore. She has been transformed. The Bible says she has been glorified. She now has an eternal body that God prepared for her in heaven. But it also tells us in Jude verse 24, it says that Jesus will personally present us to God the Father, and I love this phrase, with great joy. Jude says, Now to him who is able to keep us from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. I want you to contemplate and I want you to meditate on this truth point right here, right now. What a joy it will be, and what a joy it has been for Kathy to not only see the Lord that she loved, the Lord that she served, to be able to see him face to face, to see the light of his countenance, but to know that the countenance was an, a countenance of gladness and joy because his daughter was home with him now. Jesus said, Don't let your heart be troubled. I go to secure a place for you that where I am, you're also going to be with me forever. This passage of Scripture says that Jesus then, after revealing himself to every believer personally, he then begins to introduce that new saint that has arrived now in heaven to God the Father and to all the angels and to all the saints that have gone on before us, he presents and welcomes them to heaven with great glory and great joy. I even think I got a small amen out of some of you. That excites me. 
But it gets even better. The, the scripture tells us in Revelation 21 verse 4 that Jesus will personally comfort and heal and bring his people into complete peace and wholeness and rest. You know, there, there's a lot of things in our life that sometimes we want closure and we want things to be settled and we want resolution over every issue of our life. And sometimes, unfortunately, there are things that don't have closure. They don't reach resolution. And so we carry those things from this life, those burdens, those weights, those concerns, those anxieties. Sometimes we're still carrying them, but the Bible tells us that when we leave this life and go to the next, the scripture in Revelation 21 verse 4 says, he will wipe away every tear from our eyes and death shall be no more. Death will be abolished. Neither shall there be any mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things will have passed away. And I know a part of sometimes the lack of closure and re resolution in our hearts of the burdens we carry, whether it's about uh, family, whether it's about friends, whether it's things that we've gone through, pain moments, traumas that we've walked through in our life, and we all have these questions of why God? What, what, can, can you give me the answer? And sometimes he says, no, trust me. I can't, I'm not going to disclose to you all the answers of why. I want you to trust me. I want you to rely on me. I want you to know that I'm the way maker. I'm the miracle worker. I will take care. I'm going to complete that which concerns you. I'll resolve everything. But when you get to heaven, I believe one of the ways that God brings healing into our life is that there are no unanswered questions when we get to to heaven all the answers that we've longed to have on this side God gives us the answer for he wipes away the tears from our eyes Revelation 14 13 says I heard a voice from heaven saying write this blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on blessed indeed says the spirit that they may rest from their labors for their deeds follow them. Right now, Kathy is going to receive the reward of every act of kindness, every I love you, every act of service and how she cared for people and, and now she can rest from her let, but her, her labors are going to follow her and, and the part of those labors that are gonna follow her is how that impacted us. You know, there was a song written a number of years ago. It was called, Thank You for Giving to the Lord. And I believe the Bible tells us that we'll all stand before Christ and, and there's going to be an evaluation of what we've done with our life. And in this song, uh, and there's artistic license, but the the, the writer of that song just imagined how that when we're rewarded by the Lord for all the things that we've done in sowing seeds of love, faith, and hope in people's lives as God gave us the strength and the grace to obey Him, that a part of that is going to be things that we never knew made a significant impact. Those people are going to come up to us and say, I want you to know when you said this to me, when you served me in this way, when you, when you loved me in this way, when you hugged me in this way, uh, you know, when you went out of your way, when you smiled at me. No small gesture is unnoticed by God. The scripture teaches us that not even a, a glass of water goes unnoticed by God, but will be rewarded in heaven. Now, I want to finish today, and I want you to know as a pastor Pastors have a way of doing like three conclusions. So I, I was hoping that you would laugh just a little, okay? No, I'm going to try to have one conclusion today. As I said earlier, all of us are going to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And as a pastor who has been in ministry for nearly 40 years now, 
uh, there are two major things that I think that when people are confronted with death or a near-death moment, there are two things that people share with me privately. They'll say, Pastor Lynn, I'm very, very afraid because I don't know what's going to happen. I don't want any of you to walk out of this gathering today that you would have a fear of death. Because there is a way that your fear can be alleviated right here, right now. And the way the fear of death is overcome, the sting of death turns in from a moment of pain into a, to a victory, a moment of hope, is that is you need to know the shepherd. The shepherd that knows the way through the valley of the shadow of death. And I want to in, invite any one of you today, if you do not personally know the shepherd, and that good shepherd of the sheep is Jesus Christ. And, it, and it's not something that's complex or complicated. He said this. He said that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God. He, he said that to, to, to Martha and Mary. He said, I am the resurrection and, and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he dies, yet shall he live. And if you believe this, you will see the glory of God. It's not about performance. It's not about perfection. It's about a living faith that God himself shares his heart with you, and, and, and he imparts faith to you, and your faith reaches out to him and saying, you know, I am afraid. I, I don't know what's going to happen after I die, and, but I, I will call upon you, and I will trust you. And the Bible says that if we confess Jesus with our mouth and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, it's that symbol. It says that we will be saved. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Now, there's a second thing that I have people share with me. They'll say, Lynn, because, you know, as a pastor, you, you, you try to talk with people because you want them to be prepared for eternity. And they'll say, you don't know what I've done. You, you don't know the mistakes I've made. You don't know how sinful I've been. I've given up on myself and there's no hope for me. You know, my life has been kind of a train wreck. And I've accumulated such a sin account that truly, when it comes to me standing face to face with God, I know that he will not allow me in heaven. I've done too much. I'm too far gone. Well, if you believe that, then you're missing out on the greatest good news that I can give to you today. If, if it was simply about weighing good deeds and bad deeds in a scale and those that do a lot of good deeds get to go to heaven and those of us that have done a lot of bad deeds uh, do not get to go to heaven, then there is no hope for any of us. Because the Bible says that we've all fallen short of God's glory. All of us have sinned and fallen short. Jesus would not have had to come and we're getting ready to celebrate Easter and we're, we're, we're moving towards uh, Good Friday where we see him dying upon the cross. There would be no need for him dying. He did not die for his, his sins because he was perfect. He was sinless. He died for the sins of the whole world. He died for my sins. He died for your sins. He died for each and every one of us. And his death on the cross was a revelation of the extent of God's love for each and every one of us. They say the price that someone is willing to pay for something shows the value that the buyer, the redeemer, is willing to pay. The value that he's established on what he's going to buy. If the cross is any indication of your value to God, you should understand how much love that he has for you and for me. Salvation is not about, have I earned enough and accumulated enough good works to go to heaven? It is about trusting in a mighty Savior who has the power to save us from our sin and to receive his sacrifice 
in that he died on the cross, shed his blood to wash away our sins and to know that he, his sacrifice and our Savior was sufficient to remove that sin debt. So when I stand, you know, today, I know I'm going to go through the valley of the shadow of death, just like everybody else. But when I stand before my Jesus and I see him face to face, I'm not going to stand there afraid. I'm not going to stand there saying, am I worthy enough to qualify for forgiveness? I'm going to say, Jesus, you were the worthy one. And your blood was enough to cleanse the vilest sin that I could have ever committed. Your blood is enough. Small sin, large sin, his blood is is enough. There's a hymn that says, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So our faith is not based in our own righteousness, our own goodness. Our faith is in the righteousness of God in Christ that was revealed through his perfection and then his worthy sacrifice in which he poured out his lifeblood to show you how much he loves you. I want to just invite you right now to think about his love for you. He loves you. He loves you more than anybody could ever describe in words. If you could hear anything, and then I know if Kathy could come back for a moment, she would want to tell you one thing and one thing alone. Jesus loves you. No matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, Jesus loves you. I have to invite that love in and allow him to love me the way he desires to love me, the way he desires to love you. You are not born for time. Again, you were born for eternity. And that's where Jesus wants you to be with him. In eternity with him in heaven. He said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you can be also. Would you join me in prayer? Father, I thank you again for Kathy. Thank you for her life. Thank you for the testimony of her life. Her message came through loud and clear. And Father, I thank you that she is now resting from all of her labors. And that you have rewarded her for her faithfulness, her obedience. But Lord, I also know that she did not do the things that she did to earn your love. She trusted in you. She accepted you. She loved you. She surrendered her life to you. And Lord, you worked in her a mighty work. And you were seen through her. But Father, I also thank you, more importantly, for Christ Jesus and how he can take our mess and turn it into a miracle. How he can take what's wrong and make it right. And Father, I pray that in this moment with those that are here under the sound of my voice, you know they would be here. Not by accident, but by divine appointment. You brought us here together in this moment. Kathy, you use Kathy to bring us together to experience your love. We hear you clearly. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. I thank you for this promise. And right now in this moment, Lord, we just ask that 
once again we would renew our faith if our faith has become faint and weak in this moment we renew our faith towards you and say Jesus we believe but if we've never started that journey of faith Lord let it begin now let us say Jesus would you be my shepherd would you save come into my life Father I know that you will do what you have promised you will save you will heal you will deliver we thank you we thank you for what you're doing in all of our lives I pray that no one leaves here without feeling and sensing your great love for them and the value that you've placed upon them Jesus name I would like you to stand and I want to declare the blessing over you we say may the Lord bless you may the Lord keep you may the Lord be gracious to you may the Lord lift up his countenance and shine upon you may the Lord be merciful to you And may he give you his peace in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Two things that I want to just share briefly. We have refreshments in the basement and the family and our church family. I want to invite all of you to come down uh, to have a time of fellowship. Also, if you have family and friends that were not able to join us here in person, but you would like to share this service with them. There are two ways that you can watch this or they can watch this. It's going to take us probably a day or two to get it up, but our church, Adoration Church, has a YouTube channel, and you can go over to Adoration Church on YouTube, and then there will be a playlist, videos playlist, and we're going to have Kathy's Celebration of Life in the playlist but it'll also be on the most recent video. So that's one way. Also, if you go, I don't wanna try to find it on YouTube. We're also going to have it on our church website, which is adorationchurch.com. And you can go over and to the menu tab, hit media, and you can find it there as well. If you wanna share that with other friends and other family. Bless you all. Thank you guys for coming.